people have accused uh, me specifically and us generally of um, being unfair to atheists and agnostics. Um, I am unfair to agnostics because I'm unfair to myself. <laughs> but let me say this. Um, Saudi Arabia, uh, uh, someone on Twitter, um, I think it's at Iranian atheist. I think that's the handle who tweets at me quite frequently. Um, and, uh, but, and is very critical, but you know, he's, he makes, he makes actual points. So I'm happy to go back and forth with him a little bit. And he requested that I cover this story because Saudi Arabia has declared all atheists are terrorists in a new long law to crack down on political dissonance. Now, let me say, I support this law 100%, and let me explain why. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, I need to reset that story, but I couldn't resist that joke. It's okay. I mean, yeah. I'm sure everyone knowing you took you extremely seriously. I appreciate that. Well, there's some people, not Iranian atheists, but there's certainly some people I interact on Twitter who probably, he a billion, he a billion. Michael, he loves him, the Muslims so much. Okay. Um, but I do want to get to this story because they're actually, even the way we cover this story will allude, will illustrate some of the different ways of approaching these issues. But let's, let's get to it. So Saudi Arabia, in a recent edict, a royal decree as part of a recent string of royal decrees dealing with terrorism generally, uh, King Abdullah, Saudi, Saudi Arabia's new king, has declared that atheists are terrorists. And including, uh, according to provisions, it defines terror, it defines, uh, athe Article 1 of the new provisions defines terrorism as, quote, calling for atheist thought form in any form or calling into question the fundamentals of the Islamic religion of which this country is based. So there's a little bit of a larger picture to this in terms of Saudi politics, which I'll get to, but let me start up front by doing what uh, this person on uh, Twitter requested I do, and I'm actually quite happy to do. Uh, Saudi Arabia violates the rights of uh, Shias, certainly. <laughs> it does not allow the practice of other religions besides Islam in the country, period. Uh, it's cruel to any form of Islam that does not conform to the variant of fanatical Wahhabism that that country uh, is founded on, the modern kingdom is founded on. And it is profoundly oppressive of atheists, agnostics, and other secular thinkers and activists to the point where, as you've just seen, literally that thought is deemed illegal or a thought of terrorism. It's a profound and obscene violation of human rights. Everybody should condemn it. Saudi Arabia's role in the international system, role in the UN Human Rights Council, which in and of itself is a joke given Saudi Arabia's entire human rights record from women's rights to this, is laughable. It should be condemned and pushed against in the strongest possible terms. Now, that said, and I would say that about any country in the world, Chinese human rights violators, Iranian human rights violators, the Egyptian human rights violators, American human rights violations, French human rights violations, for human rights violations of what's happening in Burkina Faso. But one thing, and we've covered this a lot, you're not going to get a massive a condemnation of Saudi Arabia from the U.S. government or from European partners because we are in strategic alliance with Saudi Arabia because of oil and security politics in the Middle East. That's what drives politics, not this or that opinion. It's interest and it's geo strategy. And whether we're trying to explain the roots of a terrorist problem, the variants of a terrorist problem, or what drives policy and what drives alliances, you got to look at those fundamental issues. And especially if you're concerned about actually addressing human rights places and uh, human rights issues in a place like the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, it's going to take a lot. But the human rights situation is obscene, and this attack on atheists and secularists is obscene. Now, it's also part of a new rash, a new sort of several decrees that are really about addressing Saudis going and fighting in Syria. Because the Saudis, after 
funding groups, Nusra, all of these groups fighting to topple Assad, including many fanatical Sunni groups. Now the blowback is coming to them because ISIS is an enemy of the Saudi kingdom. So now, just as with Al-Qaeda, when it comes to them, they're going to push back. But in their fanatical form of Islam, Wahhabism, again, being very specific, not Islam, Wahhabism, groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda are arguably taking the last logical steps in that particular worldview. Saudi Arabia, of course, the, the, most of the people in the kingdom, they're in the leadership, they're playing both sides of this. They fund this terrorist group. They might fund that terrorist group, but they're close with America. They even have informal synergies with Israel. They're power players. That's what drives them. So they need to balance all of these things. And part of what balances it is keeping the clergy satisfied because the, the bizarre power arrangement of Saudi Arabia is a, a conflicted and multifaceted royal family that has many westernized operators, sophisticates, global geo players. It has some religious fanatics. It has many different variables, all committed to preserving the power of the family and getting their cut. And then it has a Wahhabi religious establishment that is not only more fanatical, but needs to be more fanatical because it justifies their power base. So every time you see the Saudi kingdom going back to the siege of Mecca in the late 70s, make a crackdown on extreme versions of Wahhabism, because as this article states, Saudi Arabia has introduced a new law, a series of laws which define atheists as terrorists, according to Human Rights Watch, uh, going on in this uh, piece in The Independent. A string of royal decrees and an overarching new piece of uh, legislation deal with terrorism generally, the King Abdullah has clamped down on all forms of political dissent that could, uh, quote, harm public order. The new laws have been largely brought in to combat a growing number of Saudis traveling uh, to take part in the civil war in Syria, which previously and have previously re, uh, returned with newfound training and ideas about overthrowing the monarchy. So this is mainly about that actual threat to the kingdom. The atheists and the secularists are not threats. They're terrorized and abused minorities in this totalitarian system. But people coming back from the battlefield in Syria who are even more fanatical, who might have connections in certain aspects of the power structure, they might be a threat. So when you crack down on them and the establishment of the religious orders needs to affirm that crackdown, what do you need to do along with it? You need to throw the religious establishment bones. More terrorism of atheists, more crackdowns on secularists, more sops to the right. So I condemn this 100%. It's disgusting. I condemn all manner of Saudi human rights abuses. That's the context that's driving it. 